sorry about that, guys. We are having some technical difficulties on our end, but hello, everyone. Uh, it's Casey Vineyard here at Wonders of Wildlife National Museum and Aquarium. We are so excited to have you here as we talk about our newest at-home mission through Mission Conservation, Bird Basics. Throughout the month of May, you will get to meet multiple partners to learn the exciting facts about different species of birds. Get ready to dive into some fun facts about these feathery friends. In order to play this really fun mission, all you have to do is fly on over to our mission conservation page at www.wondersofwildlife.org forward slash mission dash conservation. And that will bring you over to the mission conservation webpage. So on this website, I will bring your attention down to get the app. Once you click download, that'll take you to download the Agents of Discovery app, which you will need to play any mission conservation mission. Once you have the app downloaded, create a user account and log in. Hit the search bar and type in mission conservation. This is where we house all of our at-home missions and they will pop up for you to play. Once you have the mission popped up and loaded, hit play and get ready to have your fun adventure. If you're looking for more bird-related activities, we are going to direct you down to another part of the website where it says schedule of missions and activities. This tab will show you all the missions that we have live, including our current mission, Bird Basics. Under this tab, you will also find our activity guide that we have specifically made for you at home. There will be a craft, an awesome outdoor activity, and something you can do to promote conservation for birds. So I am currently standing here in our Amazon exhibit. The Amazon houses 1.4 billion acres of forest, 40,000 plant species, and 10 million animal species, 1,300 of which being birds. Here in our Amazon exhibit, this is where we house our Arasari. Many animals that live in these tropical rainforests have beautiful and bright colorations for camouflage with their environment. This is because tropical plants too have those very vibrant colors. And that brings me to our partner for the day. We're gonna be traveling all the way out to New Zealand to speak with our partners over at the Orana Wildlife Park. How are you doing today? Yeah, hi guys. Kia ora, can you hear me, Casey? Yes, Liz, we can hear you just fine. Uh, can you see us as well out here, over yes, here? you look great, you look great. What do you have for us today? Oh, to awesome. Hey, thank you guys. Welcome so much. And it's lovely to join us on our Bird Basics uh, session down here at Orana Wildlife Park. We are in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and standing behind, I'm standing in front of a lot of our native trees. New Zealand, um, I'm glad you're talking about Bird Basics because New Zealand, before, any humans came it was the land of the birds we had only birds and reptiles and amphibians in New Zealand we had no mammals just birds and these beautiful trees that you see behind me and the whole ecosystem here in New Zealand is dependent on that relationship between the birds the trees the birds, the reptiles, and the reptiles and the trees. So it's all really, really cool, all really linked together. And um, I'm pointing, this is what we call a kofi tree. You can't see now, but in the springtime, it has these really bright yellow flowers, which uh, a lot of our birds have especially um, sort of ad adapted beaks, which can hook into the flowers and get the nectar out. So that's a basic already with the beak shape as a basic for the birds and with our kofi tree, um, the flower links that in. But you all know in New Zealand that we have a bird called the kiwi. So if you follow me inside, I won't show you a live kiwi because they are nocturnal, but we do have a uh, what's we called a taxi do meet kiwi and that was donated to us or lent to us by our department of conservation you might call it your wildlife service we come on in come on in here this is our zoo school so welcome and here we have what we call a north island spotted kiwi so can you see this beautiful beautiful well is it a bird you can't see any wings you can't see a tail but it does have feathers. These feathers actually, when I rub my hand down, these feathers feel a bit like fur. And it's got these massive big back legs, huge, huge claws. And I'm not sure if, if you can see, here we've got these big whiskers and 
right down here are its nostrils, right down there are its nostrils on the tip of the beak. Now I said you can't see any wings, but it does have some. So if I put my thumb just under here, I can actually feel the remains of a wing. So if I hold my thumb up, and if you hold your thumb up, and if you fold your thumb in half, that's how big their wing is. So is that wing big enough to get them off the ground and enable them to fly? Of course it's not. So these are flightless birds, or the class is called a ratite. So ostriches, emus, cassowaries, they're all ratites with big powerful legs, big toes and claws, um, and that helps them to walk. And they've got, and because these guys are flightless, they don't have the basic bird bone structure of having hollow bones to keep them nice and light. They've got solid bones filled with marrow, just like yours and mine. So this is an adult kiwi. It is big enough to look after itself, big enough to breed and lay eggs. It weighs around about, um, we in New Zealand would say a kilo. So you're looking at two and a half pounds. So imagine five blocks of butter, that's about how heavy it weighs. Now I learned something the other day, well, a few years back, and we used to, we say that the kiwi's got a real, the longest beak to its size of any bird. But if you measure from the nostrils to the tip of the beak, that's what the beak length is standardly measured on. That means it's got the smallest beak, but that doesn't kind of work. Okay. So our kiwis are a long-lived bird. They can live for up to 45 years. And over here, I'll show you how big their egg is. So we have their egg. Here we have, there's the kiwi. Here I have, uh, this is your normal hen egg. So actually here's a little hen egg. And over here I have, this is an emu egg, so that's from a bird in Australia. Here we have an ostrich egg. So remember, an ostrich stands about that high, so really, really tall. But here, this is a kiwi egg. And if I hold that against its body, you'll see how big it is. When a ki And here, we've got an x-ray. Um, hopefully, you'll be able to see this. My headset's kind of moving here. Here we have the egg inside the kiwi's abdomen. So it's a huge, 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 huge space. So mum kiwi, when the egg is that big, her stomach's all squashed up and she doesn't eat for about three days um, before it's hatched. Oh, there's the egg there. And when it hatches, the chick hatches out. And it's so tired from hatching out that it um, just kind of sleeps for like a 24 hours. It's really tiring for it to get out of the egg. But when it does hatch out, it's all ready to go. It's all, it's got all the adult feathers. It doesn't fledge. And it kind of fluffs up really, really quickly um, to be just a little fluff ball. And within 10 days, um, mum and dad, they just, for this species, they leave it on its own. And the baby kiwi is like the size of my fist. So that's a pretty big sort of juvenile kiwi. So can you see the kiwi here and the egg in comparison? Long lived bird. Um, dad will sit on the egg to incubate it. And, and bird basics, mum and dad will often share duties with bird rearing. So they will do that as well. But I'm going to show you now if we can um, link through. We've got a week, a really quick video clip of one of our Kiwis called Paru. He's 22 years of age. And because they're nocturnal, um, you'll be able to see Paru um, from one of our infrared cameras. So if you just have a quick look there, can you see him fossicking around? Awesome, that was brilliant. We love having cameras on our kiwis. We can actually see their activity and what they're up to in the nighttime. So those nostrils down the end of the beak, 
they are really important for the kiwi. Did you notice that his beak was going under the ground and sort of shifting the dirt around? So that's they've got a really strong sense of smell. So he was looking for insects and worms. So he's what's called an insectivore. So he gets a lot of protein um, from the insects that they eat. Now, I told you right at the beginning of the session that um, before humans came, we only had birds, reptiles, and amphibians in New Zealand. We did have one mammal, um, the bat, but they weren't carnivores. So when humans came, they brought mammals with them. And unfortunately, some of the mammals they brought were like our ferret here. So this is a ferret. It's got fur. It's a carnivore. It's got big teeth. And birds like the kiwi with their eggs, they lay their eggs in a burrow, really, really hard for them to defend themselves against these introduced species. So the introduced species, quite common overseas, and that's their natural habitat, but here in New Zealand, they weren't here before us. So it's created a huge um, problem with birds in the wild. Oh, sorry, we guys, we guys, we seem to have clicked out. It's them, so, okay, we'll just, just talk about the kiwi? yeah, we're going to keep talking about the Kiwi. Um, unfortunately, we're having a few technical issues with the mission people, mission conservation people, so hopefully we'll come back in soon. That's a shame. Yeah. Yeah, they're back. So, hi, guys. I'm not sure where we lost you. Where did we lose you? Did we lose you when I was talking? You didn't see the ferret. So I was talking about how our native birds here in New Zealand, they had adapted over millions of years to cope with um, predators, but their predators were birds. So they had the, if they saw a big bird, they'd freeze or like the kiwi, they would hide. But when your predator is now a mammal, a carnivore with an equally good sense of smell, your freezing behavior doesn't stand up very well. So in the last 150 years, we have lost thousands of species of native New Zealand animals. And in particular, our kiwis are, are critic, un, un, endangered, vulnerable. And we also have another bird, which we breed here at Arana Wildlife Park. So with our kiwis, we breed them here at Arana Wildlife Park as well. We um, breed them for release into the wild and for release uh, to share with other zoos and wildlife parks in New Zealand. So we have a conservation center here where um, we get the, ki the kiwis will breed, we'll take their eggs, incubate them. They'll hatch out, we'll look after them and then we'll, they'll get released into the wild so they can do their really cool ecosystem job of eating our invertebrates. But there's another bird we have here in New Zealand called it's a wee type of parrot called the kakariki. So if um, you'd like to show, we've got a, a, just a, a poster of the kakariki bird. If someone can just load that up for us, it'll give you a little indication of what it looks like. Can you see that? It's a little wee, uh, it's a poster of the kakariki. Um, maybe if my assistant nods ahead, if she can see it. Okay, so it's a kakariki. So we're going to come back outside again. So the kakariki... Uh, kakariki in our Māori language means green or, and particularly with this bird, it means like a small parrot. It's a small parrot bird and it lives in our native bush area, particularly in our beech trees. And there are three species of the kakariki. There's the red kakariki, red crested, so the, the red on the poster I've got a red crest on the top. There's the yellow crested. It's a yellow crest on the top, and then there's the orange front. And here at Arana Wildlife Park, we breed the orange fronted kakariki. It's a critically endangered native bird. So critically endangered means it's real threat of extinction. There's only 300 of them left in the wild. In the last five years at Arana Wildlife Park, we have actually bred 30 kakariki chicks and then they have um, matured and we've released them into the wild as well. Now we have a really cool little photo of the kakariki chick. I hope someone can load that up for us. 
really, really cute little wee parrot. Can you see it? Yeah. Oh, awesome. It is so, so cute. The um, zookeepers, one of the zookeepers was telling me about um, the little kakariki when the chicks, once they've kind of, once mum and dad have finished looking after them, because mum and dad, um, they share the, the role of looking after the kakariki chick. They are actually a really friendly little, little bird. And the keepers tell me how sometimes they're walking through the aviary so they can hear this, feel this like brush against their ears. And it's just the kakariki, the young kakariki coming really, really, really close, almost landing on their shoulders. So they are a really awesome, critically endangered parrot. Um, now, if we come out of that photo, and if you come back to me, here live can you see me here awesome so in front if we use this kofi tree again and if i stand back and if i point now up the top of the kakariki of the kofi tree will be where the red crested kakariki parrot goes if i point to the middle of the tree middle height that is where the yellow crested kakariki lives and if i point to the bottom area that's where the um, orange crested goats. And if we come over here, I'll show you the dangers that these beautiful little birds face. So if you're living around the lower reaches of the tree, you're getting all the berries here, plus you get all the berries that fall to the ground. And so the little orange fronted kakarikis, they come down here and they'll kind of dig around the ground for all the berries. Unfortunately, now, because we have, and I'll climb over here, I've got one hidden over here, you'll get our little introduced predators again. So you can imagine, I can't show you the orange crested kakariki because they are critically endangered and they are off display. But imagine a little bird here, and then we have this digging around here looking for the berries, and then we have this introduced predator. This is a stoat, by the way. If they come in here, they don't stand much of a chance. So that's why they are critically endangered because of these introduced predators. So here in New Zealand, we ask that people, um, the one thing they can do, because it's not just these little fellas that are the predators, it is animals, other animals that we brought with us as humans. Over here, we brought dogs and we brought cats. So the conservation message that we have around a wildlife park is that we ask people to please, 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 can they keep their cats inside? It'd be really, really awesome if they could do that. And if they're walking into the native bush areas, into our native forest areas, if they can keep their dogs on a lead or even put a muzzle on their dogs because they, um, Kiwis are kind of like sitting ducks, as it were. They, and a lot of our birds are sitting ducks. Now, I was, we was, I was talking to my assistant today, wondering if you could actually hear the birds here. I'm going to kind of take my headset off and kind of point the microphone up and see if you can hear our birds. Uh, and they went, but we have, um, when the settlers first arrived, a European settlers first arrived in New Zealand, um, the first ships that came, the sound of the bird song was so loud that the sailors requested that the captains take the ships back offshore out to sea because they couldn't sleep. The birds, even the night birds were so loud. And during the daytime, you couldn't hear yourselves talk to each other. So that's how many birds there were in New Zealand. There were just thousands and thousands of them. But here at Arana Wildlife Park, because we've bred those um, 30 kakariki chicks, we are doing a really good job. And we have a lovely video clip of Josh, our, one of our head natives keepers. So it's of him um, catching some kakariki, the kakariki chicks going um, into the wild. So if you can, upload that video now that would be really awesome for you lovely mission people to have a look at just here at Arana Wildlife Park this morning just getting ready to catch up 12 juvenile orange fronted kakariki uh, they're going to be released into the wild today orange fronted kakariki are one of our native New Zealand birds unfortunately they are really critically endangered there's only about 300 of these guys left in the wild uh, so we're really privileged to be part of the breeding program here. We work alongside our partners, the Isaacs Conservation Wildlife Trust and the Department of Conservation to breed these guys here in captivity and then release them back into the forest.
We catch the orange fronted kakariki up in mist nets and then we put them into wee transport boxes that we take in by helicopter to the south branch of the Hiranui here in Canterbury and then released into the wild. When people visit us here at Orana Wildlife Park, the admission ticket goes directly back into supporting important conservation programs like this one. If people want to get involved in uh, conservation programs uh, in their own backyard, a really simple thing to do would be set up a wee trapping program. If you can trap rats and mice, uh, that would be really beneficial to the native birds in your backyard. Awesome, that is really cool. We love Josh, he's one of our um, awesome keepers here and he's so passionate about saving our native bird life, as are we all. Birds are really, really important. Um, not only do they look beautiful and sound beautiful with their song, but they are, in New Zealand, they are seed dispersers, so they'll eat a berry and then they'll poop out the seed. So that seed then can regenerate the forest. They are pollinators, so they can stick their beaks into flowers and then, or even just by moving through the trees, they can collect pollen and then they can spread it so they can pollinate. Plus they are also insectivores. So they, like the kiwi, they are insect eaters. So they keep our insect populations down. So multifaceted role, really, really important. And I like to tell the students that I teach without birds here in New Zealand, every time you ate something, you would be kind of eating an insect. Maybe your sandwich would be covered in insects. Any food you ate would be covered in insects because they consume a lot of our wild our insects, which. Um, they are important in their own right, but we don't want too many of them. Uh, we know that birds have wings, um, birds fly, but you said that not all birds, we saw this morning, not all birds fly. So with our bird basics, I have shown you a bird that's not a bird, but then I've shown you our beautiful kakariki, our orange fronted kakariki, which is a critically endangered bird that does fly, really really cute little bird really important to the ecosystem and also one that's critically endangered and what we are doing a really good job here of of in increasing their numbers so which we are really really proud of now um thank you here from Orana wildlife park it's been awesome to join you today we out in front of our native, well, this is just a few of our native trees. We do have a huge, huge park, and I'm not sure if you can see if I turn around this way, if you can, can still see all these trees behind me here. So behind those trees there are where our kiwi breeding unit is, uh, where we have lots of aviaries with our other cool birds, and where a lot of the natives team do all their important work. So this is a big bit of Arana Wildlife Park. So we do have lots of exotic species, but here, this is our natives precinct. Really, really important, and especially in the world going forward, we need to look after our birds. So remember, bird basics, birds are beautiful. We can't be here without the birds. So are we all good to say goodbye? So thanks guys. As we say in New Zealand, kakite ano, harara, see you again. Liz, thank you so much. I did actually have a question for you if you have the time. So my question for you, um, if you're still on with us, um, so you released the kakariki um, into a forest, I presume. Is it a tropical forest? The, the coloration of those birds are absolutely beautiful. So um, could you talk a little bit about the environment that you're releasing those birds into? Oh, absolutely, Casey. Um, and I love the way that um, we you decide the, the forest we release them into. So that's in Canterbury in New Zealand. We are a temperate climate. So where you are in BC, it's just a slightly warmer than British Columbia, but like around Vancouver. So not tropical. Even though those parrots, they have the beautiful colours, it's mostly just on their head. So the forest they're released into is pretty green. And it's not far from where I grew up as a child. It's um, near an alpine lake and it's a beech forest. So it's like green trees, just like these trees just here. So beautiful colors, but not tropical. Um, pretty temperate, they get snow uh, probably for three months of the year. Their area will have snow around it and very cold. So no, not tropical Casey, but um, the coloration is to help with the boys and the girls finding each other.
So that's what bird colours in New Zealand are often for, for the girls and boys to find each other. The brighter the colour, hey, you look really good, I like you, you can be my boyfriend. <laughs> so that's, um, that's how, how it often goes. And does that, does that answer your question, Casey? <laughs> yes, yes, it does, absolutely. Thank you so much, Liz, I appreciate it. Well, thank no. you for joining us today, Liz. Um, these awesome. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Okay, yeah, thank you so much. So uh, these animals are beautiful and it's important that we protect them. Um, well, that is all of the time that we have for this live stream, but we will see you next Tuesday at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time with our partner, Alaska Raptor Center. Don't forget to tune in and we will see you next week. Thank you. Bye guys. I'm not sure they want to talk to me again.